Well, hello, everyone. We are so excited that you're with us today. And we have a special guest with us today. And she is from Boston. And she also covers the Cape Cod area. She has seven people on her team. She's an exceptional negotiator and marketer. And she is in 2015 Realtor Magazine 30 Under 30 finalist, and she's also a sales trainer and conference panelist, and we are so excited to have Jessica Witter with us. So Jessica, welcome. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Great. Well, we're so excited that you're with us. I want you to first start by talking about lead generation. So what specific examples come to mind that has produced the most sales for you? Absolutely. So I think one thing that I did outside of the box, so I know everyone on the call seems to be a little bit from everywhere. So you're going to have to kind of tweak this to how it would fit in your city or town. So for me, there's a lot of high rise buildings here in Boston. So one I specifically lived in, I went to the manager and they put on a lot of events for the residents there. And I said, how would you feel? And sometimes that you come home at night, there's somebody in the lobby, you know, maybe a fitness instructor or dog walker kind of promoting their business. And I said, how would you feel if on Wednesday nights, at least once a month, I was in the lobby just talking about real estate have kind of, so I was living in a seaport location. So there was all brand new buildings coming in. The city Skype was changing every day. And I said, I'm just going to simply ask people if they have questions. I'm going to call it wine down Wednesday. I got a little real glass of uh, wine glass, put my logo and a lender's logo on it in our phone numbers. And simply as they came in from after work, five to seven was when we were normally there. They'd normally stop and ask what was going on. I had a restaurant locally that would give me a charcuterie board with a lot of different meats and cheeses. I let them put their pamphlet out. And then also the um, lender would be there and people would come in and just stop and say, what's this? What's going on? I'd give them a glass of wine that they didn't have to stay and finish with me. They were able to take it home. So then they didn't feel like they had to have a glass of wine and really chat. I said, oh, you can take that home. That's for you. Now they have my phone number, my name, my logo by simply doing that. One other thing we tied into it was we asked them if they wanted to do a raffle. So what I would do is raffle off something really big. And um, well, let me back up. The first time I did it, I raffled off something really big. So we did a boat cruise for nine friends. It was free of charge. There's nothing else besides you give me your name and your email. Then they go into my group in my CRM under wind down Wednesday and every other wind down I invite them to the wind down without them knowing what the raffle is. And it worked uh, tremendously. I didn't put these people on a random email blast. They weren't getting hit with my listings here and listings there. I only sent them seaport information because I knew they were local residents. And I sold probably over $8 million within a year from just doing that. Um, people, it was a rental building. So you do have to get in with management, kind of explain what you're doing and not that you're trying to steal clients from the location. Um, but just really educate them on, on the, on where they're living in the neighborhood they're in. And again, this all basically cost me nothing because the lender paid for the wine. He, and the, the local restaurant did their own charcuterie board because I let them put up pamphlets. And then the only thing that I split with the lender was the raffle. So like we did a a boat cruise that was, it was actually my company's boat. So I got a more discount on that. We did five sessions to soul cycle. We did everything within the community or a gift card. So that was probably my biggest lead gen that I think is a little bit out of the box. Again, some of my people would, my, my Cape Cod clients are like, well, where, you know, we don't have high rises. What could we do there? I'm sorry, my Cape Cod agents. We talked about like even nursing homes or like something or the soccer field, something that you can provide value about the community in a location that someone wouldn't necessarily expect you to be, because that's how you're getting outside of the box and doing something different than every other agent. Mm, I love that. So let's talk about online lead generation scripts to close the lead, because I think that one of the things people are seeing is they're getting all kinds of different leads coming in from Zillow or just their online presence, and they're just not able to convert them. So I want to really dive in detail and for you to give the exact things that people need to say 
and do in order to close those leads? So I'm actually going to twist this a little bit because I don't use scripts. I really believe in online conversion and open house conversion. Your biggest, most important thing is consistency. It's not necessarily one word that's going to close the deal. It's not necessarily one line that's going to ring them in. It's being consistent. So for instance, um, I have a few stories that when I teach this class, I discuss, but what happens most likely when these agents aren't converting the lead is the lead comes in and they call them, they text them. They maybe do it one or two more times and then they never do it again. With what I do, they go directly into my CRM and I am hitting them every time I'm doing lead generation. Every single time I'm sitting with all of my open house or online leads and I'm just simply typing to them. And I had a conversation with a man basically to the air for over a year and two days. And I finally converted him and he ended up being an executive at the Bruins. And he ended up doing a 1031 exchange with me. And he had inquired on the most random listings. Like he was one time and I know you're not all from Boston, but South Boston. And then he went to Cambridge and then he was in Brookline. None of these areas are similar to each other. So basically the lead came in and he didn't even have his name. It was like Akibot at Gmail. I didn't, I didn't even know his name. So I just simply replied. You also need to reply within the first minute, if you can, when that lead comes in. So if you're sitting at your desk, if there's a phone number, you immediately pick up the phone and call. If there is an email and they didn't answer the phone number and you left a voicemail, you immediately then send an email. And you say, so so let me stop you real quick, because what I'm going to have you do right now is I'm going to have you do a role play with Heather. Okay. And she's going to, Heather Rimmick is going to do it with you. And I want to hear exactly what you're saying. And I'd love to hear the exact text and the email that you're doing. Because one of the problems I'm seeing with different things that, you know, I've asked a couple of people, I say, okay, well, they're saying people aren't responding. And I'm like, let me see what you're writing. And they're extremely generic and they're not personal at all. And I keep telling everyone the less professional you can be, the better response you're going to get. A thousand percent. I couldn't agree with you more. And when my agents sit down and they retype the email four times, I'm like, this is crazy. You're wasting way too much time on someone that is only a customer, not a client. They have given you no time. Why are you wasting time on them? That's one of my biggest, biggest things that I say is be yourself, be personable and be consistent. And I don't even most of the time look up the property before I call them. If Because most of the time they don't pick up. But I will try and pull it up as I'm calling them. Fast is what's most important. I want to catch them while they're still sitting at their computer. So I think that's the biggest thing. And like you said, be yourself. You don't use scripts. So go ahead and practice with Heather. And one of the things I want to tell you is that if you on your notes section in your phone, type these out right now, and then literally you should be just be copying and pasting. When that lead comes in, make it where it's, friendly enough. It's not professional. You literally copy and paste, copy and paste. I love what you just said, because that is such a gem, Jessica. I'd love for you guys to type that in the the chat right now. So you don't forget it. You want to be yourself. You want to respond quickly, but you don't want to be spending all this time drafting the perfect thing when this is not a customer yet. I mean, this is not a client yet. You, This is just somebody who is inquiring. Make it fast, make it quick, make it consistent. All right, Heather, and go ahead. I just want to say one other thing. And when you're following up with them throughout, because sometimes they don't answer the first time. Like it took me a year to really make this man start answering me. It should be a two second email. You should be able to have a CRM that has everyone in there. You hit 10 people and I'll literally say, Wow, it's getting really cold here in Boston this week. Are you still looking for a condo? I'd love to hear about your real estate search. I'm here whenever you're ready. Send it. And I send it to 25 people, however many leads there are. And that's when you're not spending any time. 
but oh, Heather, go ahead. Sorry. I wanted to jump on that from what you okay, said. So, so actually we'll start with you, Jessica. Cause so Heather just did an inquiry about looking to buy a random house. What would your call be? What would your email be? And what would your text message be? Okay. Well, we'll start. So hi, is Heather there, please? This is she. Hi, Heather. I just saw that you inquired on one of my listings at 390A Street in South Boston. Was that you? Oh, yeah, it was me. I was clicking around on the computer. Oh, perfect. Are you actually in South Boston now? No, I'm in a suburb over, but we were thinking about, like, we were just looking and see what was on the market there. Oh, amazing. What suburb are you in? North Boston. North Boston, great. Um, have you guys been searching online for a while or was this just kind of a new thing that you've been talking about? Oh, we've been like looking around for maybe the past month, just here and there when I have chance to sit down at the computer and kind of look at some stuff. Nice. Are you buying this for yourself or, or with somebody else? Um, With someone else. Okay. Who's the other person? Um, My husband. Oh, nice. What's your husband's name? Kyle. Kyle, that's great. So you and Kyle have been kind of looking in the South Boston area for the past month or so. Have you ever gone to any open houses or seen any property? No, no, we've only been looking online. I um, really mean. Really new. So have you talked to anybody about the process? Are you guys first time home buyers? Have you done this before? Oh, we've done it before. We're just looking at, you know, getting something new. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear more about your search. Did I catch you at an okay time? I'm actually getting ready to run out the door. Um, we've got to, I got to get my kid to soccer practice. Oh, I totally understand. I have a five-year-old myself. So I understand your time is valuable. So I won't hold you now because it doesn't sound like it's a good time to chat. Do you prefer to be on email or um, if I call you back? Oh, email. I, I can respond quickly on my email. Oh, wonderful. So Heather, I'm going to jump off the line with you. I'm going to send you an email with probably a 10 to 12 questionnaire, just kind of learning about what you and your husband are looking for. And in that email, I'm also going to describe a few tools that can really help you um, when you're in the, the purchasing process of your search to really help us stay in line rather than just going on Zillow and Redfin and all these different other websites. And then if you have time, you can sit down with your husband, email back any um, questions you have in the questionnaire. And then I would love to talk again and, and be able to hopefully help you with your search. Okay, that sounds good. Perfect. So I'm going to send you that email and all my direct contact info will be right there. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. And if I don't hear from you by the end of the week, I'll just shoot you another email following up to make sure everything you got everything okay. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 So, so Jessica, what would be the perfect text or email for a buyer and a seller? Let's give two different ones that would be generic enough that they could have it in their notes section of their phone. Like you said, every time they inquire, and then you could say, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste. Cause you know, even if you're driving, if you're at a stoplight or whatever, you could stop and be like, boom, I just, they, I got a lead copy, paste, boom. By the time the light is over, you can, I'm probably shouldn't be telling people to text and drive, but <laughs> <laughs> pretend like you're well, in a meeting real, someone it, right? was at the bathroom or something like that. But you see what I'm saying? What would be something that would be super personal that you could use for each buyer? How would you respond to that? So I guess my first question is, did I not call them? And it, it, did I not call them because I'm busy? You didn't call them because you were in a point. Let's say you were at a lunch with someone. They just went to the bathroom. You've got a minute. You're going to send something out. What would you send? So if it was a buyer, I think I would say, um, sorry, give me a second to think through this. I would probably just say, because I don't have their name because you wanted to just copy and paste. Can I fill in their name? If you hide their name, I'd put their name in. Yeah, so you I'd, could add you can add their name in with the copy and paste. Yeah. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for inquiring on the property. I would love to chat with you about it. I'm tied up right now. So I'm going to give you a call with before the day's end. Okay. Something like that. Something um, like that. Okay. 
And then if it was a seller, I would probably say, so they're asking me to list their property. I'm so excited to chat with you about listing your property and why you loved this home. I will call you by day's end because I'm not going to just text. I'm going to follow up with a phone call, especially if I have their number. What about some that I think is making sure that you respond immediately. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the biggest thing is that, and this is also when you're converting leads, why I say consistency is so important because you are right now, you, you bring no value to them. You don't bring value to people until they actually need it and want it. Exactly. Like Heather said, a lot of the time people are just poking online. They didn't even realize they inquired on something. So the issue is you want to take that person that didn't know they even inquired on something, follow up with them consistently enough as if you actually care and you're not just some random person, you know, trying to sell them $800 worth of different things. You just keep saying, you know, I always use this example as well. Um, I had a big brother growing up and I would always, we had a lot of road trips for sports. And like, when you sit in the back of the car and I'd be like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. You don't want to be the annoying sister in the back of the car. You want to be someone popping in saying, hey, I'm here when you're ready. I'm here when you need help. Don't forget, I'm still here if you need me. And and ask them provoking. And it's like what I was trying to say with Heather. As you go through this, you ask provoking questions that they answer. I didn't ask her how many beds or baths she was looking for yet. I more want to know about Heather and what she's looking for. When you can get somebody on the phone or via email. And again, um, as you said, if no one answers, you can send the same generic email to 10 people asking the same questions. And now a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Kanzel Realty. One of the other things we give you is revenue share, where you get five levels of money in your downline every time you attract an agent to the company. And guess what? The first three levels open up right away. So let's pretend like you're not a great recruiter, but you bring on a couple people who are heavy hitters. Guess what? You don't have to hire five or 10 agents to open up those tiers. You automatically get those. So that's what makes us very different. This is Kanzel. I love that. So one of the things that I want to kind of repeat back to you that you said was that the consistency of reaching out to them is key. And we've kind of created, and we're going to send this out for whoever wants it. You can just type it in the chat and we can send it out to you. But basically it's something where it's a daily thing where we we call it the 21 days of pain, which means for the first five days, you're texting, emailing, calling them until you get a hold of them. So that's the first five days. Then it's every week. So you add another four, four times once a week after that is another touch. And then after that, it's once a month. Do you think that's enough? Do you like that cadence? Or do you have something else that you feel like is the right cadence? Because to me, my number one thing is I get so frustrated because people, like you just said, they reach out once. If they're really great, they reach out twice. And then if they're really superb, they reach out three times. And the National Association of Realtors says it's between contact number seven and contact number 11 that anyone freaking responds. And so great. You're like, these leads are terrible because you only reached out number three times when it's number seven to 11 that actually matters. So what's, what's your cadence that you, that you like? So what I try to do is agree with you. The first five days, you're, you're constantly trying to reach out. Maybe it's every two days. The first day I've called text and emailed if I haven't gotten a response. And I always ask them which way they prefer to communicate in any of those forms of communication, because I think it's really important. If someone hates the phone, I need to know that up front because they want to text or they want an email. So the In the first email I send, it's always like that. But I'm going to say one thing I realized, especially with running a team, is that we need to make this as simple as possible to make people follow up. So my thing is every morning while you're having a cup of coffee, don't even worry about just constantly reach out. So do it every three days. If that person dropped from the five hits to the seven, to to the once a month, 
I honestly sometimes didn't even know because I just went in and during lead gen time and follow-up time, I was bulk emailing these people saying basically the same thing. Some weeks they got hit three times. Some weeks they only got hit once. Some, it might've skipped a week at one point. I, again, when the lead first comes in is the most important time. And then it's consistently, consistently. And that is what Anthony, I'll never forget when I finally converted him after a year in two days, he said to me, wow, I answered you maybe five times. And I said, right, but I knew you were a live person because you answered. And then you kept inquiring on all these different properties. And I, I, I knew you were out there and you were an actual person. And he's like, no other agent did contacted me probably more than once. And he's like, and you're not the first person I inquired with. And I was like, yeah, I was like, you have to be consistent. And I have now sold them three properties and he believes in consistency. I also think that, as I said to Heather, I will follow up with you at the end of the week. Not only does that become a task in my CRM, that goes right on my calendar because you need to follow up people when you say you're going to follow up. So that becomes an event on my calendar. So there's no way I miss it. Like no way. It's a, it's actually like an appointment. Um, the biggest thing I think about that is when I learned when I had an age, um, I had an executive coming into Boston. He was referred to me from one of my clients he ended up, we went out one day looking at rentals and, you know, nothing big. He ended up going to a high rise and here in Boston, you can go directly through a leasing office. So you don't necessarily need an agent. And he felt really bad, but he was like, you know, we just walked in. My wife fell in love. We signed a lease. I'm like, that's fine. It happens. I said, like, can you just let me know when your lease ends? And he was like, oh yeah, we're doing one year. You know, we're starting on the 12th. So it's going to end on whatever 12th. I said, okay, great. Do you mind if three months prior, I'm going to reach out to you just to see if you think you're renewing your lease, if you think you're going to look to buy this time or what's going on? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Reach out to me in December. I was like, perfect. Became a task and an event. And he was like, I ne I called him the day I told him I was going to call him. And he's like, I never in a million years expected you to remember to call me. And he's like, you absolutely have my business. And we were looking at waterfront property over a million dollars the week later. So that's just showing consistency, no matter what, what you're doing, no matter if it's an online lead referral, it kind of ties it all in together, I think is the biggest thing. Mm, I like that. So I just, I'm going to type in the chat. I want to really stay on this topic because I think people run out of stuff to say. And so like, if we're talking about things that are not professional, but are another touch point. So something like in the very beginning, it'd be some, and I'll throw this out there, like, thanks so much for reaching out to me about the property. You're interested, just curious, what's the best way for me to communicate with you? Do you like text, email, or phone? And then maybe add an emoji with it. You know, that's something you could text to some people. So give us a couple of the, you know, another one of those first texts that you could write, but a couple of those follow-up ones that you would be able to mass do it to everyone. Kind of like you said, like, it's, it's so hot here today. You know, I don't, I'm like, literally sweating, just walking out the door, something like that. And then whatever else it is. So give us a couple more of those. So when I was um, making my, my, when I was making my class that I taught at NAR, I sat down with my manager and she was like, let's take like four online leads that you converted and let's print out because I track everything. Let's print out the emails and the conversations you had with them and kind of like make slides off of that. And it's honestly hilarious to read because one, I realized I talked to myself for months before people respond. And I constantly talk about the weather <laughs> because that's just something that is a mass that's easy to do because I know, you know, it's so cold here in Boston. Like it, I just always talked about the weather, um, seasons changing. We always talked about that. Um, it was always just and what I believe too is do not send a three paragraph email with, it should be three sentences at most. Hi, Susie. Or, and you can, you know, in a CRM, you can put someone's name if you have them tracked or just hello. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's Wednesday. Looking forward to the weekend. Are you thinking of going to any open houses? Send. Um, you could do, again, I, I said the weather all the time. You could do the condo market's really speeding up here. If you are still interested in looking something, make sure you give me a call right away. Um, I never try and sell myself. I never try. And, I just talk about generic things 
whether some of it doesn't have to do with real estate, like I said, weather or the day of the week or anything like that. And these are all take two seconds to just send someone and you're just being a person. I, one, I always send, you know, hi, Susie. I just really hope, um, you know, I'm always here to help with any of your real estate needs. I'm looking forward to connecting with you. Mm. Simple Let's talk, things. Let's talk about time blocking. Cause I think that that is the key to being able to make sure that no matter what, this is your time that you're doing these kind of follow-ups. So do you have like a routine for that where you go, you know, I'm going to do follow up with my online leads between nine and 11 one day or five and six another day, or is it just every day? It's the same time every day. What does that look like for you? Yeah. So my life drastically changed and I have a 10 month old. So I'm going to tell you what I did before that, because having a child at home, sometimes it's twerked my stuff, but no, honestly, what I think you should work on your online leads who have not answered you or any open houses leads is your downtime. So if I'm having my coffee in the morning, and there's chaos going around me. That's what I'm doing it. If my husband and I are sitting on the couch and we're watching TV late at night or in the in the afternoon, that's when I'm doing it. I'm doing it when I can be multitasking because again, this is not something that's brain surgery. This is not something that needs my full dedicated attention. I'm just sending mass emails. So I just try and fit it in my day and I try and do three days a week because then I think that I'm hitting those people that consistently enough. I like that. One of the things that you had discussed with me is that the housewarming parties are, have really been a huge success for you. I want you to discuss those in detail of how you are doing that and how they're being so successful with you. Absolutely. So <clears throat> housewarming parties obviously took a little turn due to COVID, but we are coming back to them now. So the way it normally would be set up was my, when I, when I'm out with a buyer, I let them know that, you know, oh, so at the end of the process, we love to help throwing a housewarming party. Like it's just in conversation if you're in the car or at a house or whatever, so that they know it's something to expect at the end of the transaction. Um, as we get to the, towards the end of the transaction, we say, remember, we mentioned that housewarming party. So here's kind of how we like to do it. If this is something you're interested in, but no pressure at all. Basically, you send us a list of um, your friends' names and emails. We'll populate it in Evite for you. We'll send it for your approval. We will provide um, X amount of dollars in food. Here's three different menus. A lot of times we do a Patriots football party and we'll do wings and pizzas. Or if you want a taco night, we can figure out something like that or just cheese and meats and something lighter. We can't provide liquor, but we will provide um, soft drinks as well. And once we have an RSVP, we'll let you know who's in the list that's coming. We'll, we'll we link them into the to the Evite so they can see that as well. It looks as if I'm inviting their friends to a party at their house. That's the key is, is trying to make it like you're really putting it on. And a lot of the times I don't stay the whole time. I drop off the food. I help set up depending on the client, depending on the vibe, it will depend if you stay and help clean up or if it's more of like something you're just kind of providing being there at the beginning. They always say, Oh, do you have your business cards? Leave them out. Um, and then I'm standing in a room with usually 15 to 20 people. And they're saying, oh, this is my realtor. She helped me buy this house. And then again, my biggest thing is when people give you their emails for a raffle or in a situation like this, I make sure they know I'm not going to put them on my newsletter. I'm not going to spam them. I'm not going to send them random listings that they can't even afford unless they ask to be on those newsletter lists. You have to make sure you're not taking advantage of people's email. Um, we get enough junk as it is. I don't want to become junk. I want to be, I want to be. Uh, a value to someone. And I'm not going to take something from my client and then spam all their friends. I just don't think that's the way to do it. So I think it's a very light sell. You're providing not a ton of food. I mean, it's not, doesn't cost a ton. And you're being in a room with people that you're being introduced to of like their happiest moment showing off their house. And I'm their, their go-to person for it. Mm, I love and then that. we always thank them for coming to the party. So now they've already gotten two emails from me. They've gotten an email for the invite. Well, actually they've gotten three because then we send a reminder for the invite. And then we follow up and say, it was so nice to meet you at the party. Thanks for stopping by. And I always put my clients on it so they like see what's happening. And I, I do let them know how the communication will go so that they make the decision if they want the party or not from me. And some people don't, and that's okay. But most of the time people are like, oh, that's amazing. I don't have to do anything. Great. 
So is there any time-saving tips for the housewarming party that have made your life easier from doing them? Oh, like, yeah. Do you do have- Evite to make it simple? We do Evite. We have a breakdown. Like so, so one thing I will say in everything I do has basically... And I don't want to use the word scripts because I told you I don't really use them, but like an email breakdown. So like if we have an accepted offer, there's a generic email that my assistant plugs and plays that says, and we call it the next steps email. And it breaks down everything that's happening from the second they have a signed offer to the closed table and the housewarming party offering after. It has like dates. It has when their deposits will be due. It has everything broken down. And then when they, when it's time for the housewarming party, we have the housewarming party email. It's just a template, has everything that we would do in the housewarming party for them if they're interested. And then we just run with it. It already has the menus of the four places we'd offer. We say, if you really want something different, let us know. We can talk it out. Um, But yeah, those are such time savers. Like when, when you have an accepted offer and you get something from your agent that's called Next Steps and it breaks down everything that's happening from the, and it's the same thing with the sellers everything that's going to happen from the second they signed an offer to close. I also though don't include some things that they don't need to worry about. So like smoke inspection, we let them know we take care of it. Um, appraisal, we let them know what's going to happen, but there's nothing because you don't want someone to get overwhelmed either. I want to take off everything from my client as possible, but yes, those templates are huge time savers. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, for being with us. And please think of Jessica for your referrals in the Boston and Cape Cod area. And we are so grateful that you're with us. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review so we can get this out to more agents. And tune in next week for another power-packed episode. This is the Millionaire Real Estate Podcast.